And of course, a uh, fat is not a fat. So there are two types of saturated fats, not one, two. There's red meat saturated fats, and then there's dairy saturated fats. And they are not the same either. Even though dairy comes from a animal that also provides red meat. So like, why is that? But it's true. So it turns out red meat is filled with even chain saturated fatty acids, C16 and C18, palmitate and stearate. And those, as I've said, are cardiovascularly neutral. Got it. Red meat saturated fats, even chained, those are cardiovascularly neutral. Neutral, neutral. Not, not, not uh, good or bad. Not good or bad. Neither good nor bad. Dairy saturated fat, so like in milk, turns out to be odd chain saturated fatty acids, C15 and C17. And those odd chain saturated fatty acids have a specific phospholipid signature on their tail end, which is why they stay in solution. Because after all, fat, you know, is in milk, right? I mean, yes, the cream rises to the top, but there's still fat in milk, even after the cream rises to the top. The, the phospholipid, you know, allows both the, you know, the, the oil and the water, if you will, to mix. <clears throat> and so um, they turn out to actually be protective against cardiovascular disease. Protective. Protective. Dairy saturated fat is protective against so, cardiovascular disease. So are you telling us that there's no saturated fats that are clearly negative across That's the board? Right. That's right. There are no saturated fats that are clearly negative. They're neutral if they're even chained neutral. like red meat, and they're actually protective if they're odd chained like from dairy. Exactly right. So you also have to know that you know the reason everybody made a bruja over saturated fats was this molecule that came out of your liver called LDL. Mm -hmm. Now, we've already talked about VLDL. Well, LDL and VLDL are not the same either. Okay, What makes VLDL? Sugar. What makes LDL? Dietary fat. Dietary saturated fat. Okay, So there's no question that dietary saturated fat increases your LDL. And there's also no question that in large population studies, LDL levels correlate with cardiovascular disease. That is also true. Okay, the hazard risk ratio for high LDL and coronary heart disease is 1.3. So if you have a high, LD, uh, high LDL, you are 30% more likely to die of a heart attack than if you don't have a high LDL. Okay, that's real. And I'm not even saying it's not. I totally subscribe to that. 1.3. Turns out the public health community has identified 1.3 as sort of what's necessary for a public health effort. So if it was 1.29, we wouldn't even be having this discussion because it'd be, we'd be below the threshold. But we're at 1.3. That VLDL that I told you about before, the hazard risk ratio for high triglyceride and coronary heart disease is 1.8. So if you have a high triglyceride, you are 80% more likely to have a heart, die of a heart attack than if you have a low triglyceride. So which one is worse, the LDL or the triglyceride? Well, clearly the triglyceride. So why are we spending all this time worried about the LDL when we're not even focused on the triglyceride? And the answer is because we had a medicine for it. Mm. So we that's why patterns. that's why when my mother, my late middle-aged mother, recently went to the doctor and her LDL was high, but her triglycerides looked fine, the doctor was immediately like, you should be on a statin. Well, that's what the guidelines say. And the guidelines suck. Because they're not taking into account this whole issue. In addition, there's not one LDL. Mm -hmm. There's two. And we don't normally measure the VLDLs when you go to the doctor. Is that accurate? Number one, you don't, well, you measure serum triglyceride when you go to the doctor, mm -hmm. but there are two LDLs. Mm -hmm. So VLDL is its own thing, but there are two LDLs. 
There's one called large buoyant or type A, and there's another one called small denser type B. Mm. And it's been shown that the large buoyant is the one that dietary fat raises, but the large buoyant, and that, and by the way, large buoyant is 80% of your LDL concentration in your blood. But it turns out the large buoyant are cardiovascularly neutral. That's why I said, you know, for the most part, they're cardiovascularly neutral because the large buoyant LDL do not contribute. Number one, they're large. They're so large, they don't fit under the surface of the endothelial cell to start the foam cell formation process to actually drive the plaque. And they're buoyant, they float. So they take, they go through laminar flow in your arteries and arterioles, and they basically don't set up a chance for those um, uh, particles to be able to actually get under the endothelium to cause problems. So large buoyant are cardiovascularly neutral because they're not contributing to the pathogenetic process of heart disease. Conversely, small dense, they're small. Okay, they're, you know, I mean, from an angstrom standpoint, they're about uh, 10 angstroms smaller than the large buoyant, um, you know, 273 versus 283 microns or so, uh, or ang angstroms, sorry, angstroms. And they are small enough to get under the surface of the endothelial cell, and they're dense. They don't float. So they fall out of laminar flow so that they can approach the um, uh, endothelial cell surface so they can get underneath. And then they oxidize, and now you've got oxidized small dense LDL, and now you've got a pathogenetic substrate for heart disease, no ifs, ands, or buts. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is a fat's not a fat, an LDL's not an LDL, okay? And uh, you know this whole concept that we should go fat-free to solve the problem actually only created two more. It created both obesity and mm -hmm. type 2 diabetes.